What is up, people? Welcome to the third. Is it the third? Third, yeah. Third, third episode of Ask Project A. My name is Esan, and I'm here joined by Michael and Joshua. No strangers to the Project A fans and family out there, and everybody else watching us from all over the world. Let yeah. us know where in the world you're tuning in from. So in the in the comments below, drop your emoji of the flag of your country. Let us know our USA fam, our Singapore fam, Taiwan, Europe, Germany, um, Americas, <laughs> Puerto Rico. Is Lebanon. there any Puerto Rico in the house? Did I miss anyone? Lebanon. Lebanon. Amir. Amir Middle watching. East. Yeah. Amir is watching. Habibis. <laughs> Habibis. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know where you're tuning in from. Uh, this is a show where we actually get up close and personal with these two gentlemen and ask them your frequently asked questions because we might not have the time to answer each and every single one individually so we pick the most frequently asked ones and put these guys on the spot and get them to basically give you guys uh, answers and also it's a chance to get to know these guys better find out what goes on behind the scenes at Project A and for you guys to better understand uh, who these guys are and what, what this company is all about. Um, so I think we have selected a bunch of questions that you guys have sent in uh, for, since the last episode. But before we go into the, those questions, I just want to remind you guys, if you are watching us, every week we're going to give away a free, absolutely free, customized Project A tune. All you have to do to stand a chance to win that tune is to share this video right now. So hit the share button. And then in the comments below, tag five friends, let us know where you're watching from and what your car model is. And tomorrow at 8 p.m. Malaysia time, so we're going to give about 24 hours time for all our friends watching in different parts of the world, you know, given the time difference. We're going to give them about a day to take part as well. And we're going to pick one lucky winner from all the comments and people who've shared. So if you're watching, hit the share button right now. So guys, are you ready? Should we go straight into the questions? Let's go. Yeah, so we have some interesting questions uh, this week. Yeah. Um, the first one is about your tuning maps. So one viewer asked us, do you guys use off-the-shelf maps? So yeah, do you guys use off-the-shelf maps? And actually, what are off-the-shelf maps? The answer, question mm. from Michael. Oh, that's a question for me, yeah. right? Okay, let me, so let me see, where do I start? Um, an off-the-shelf map is, um, well, if, figuratively speaking, you take a map that is already pre-made okay. and whack it on the car. So basically, off-the-shelf maps are files that are pre-written for certain software versions, and you just um, download them from a server and install them on a car without doing much to it, or without doing anything to it, basically. So um, the clear answer is no. Um, we don't use OTS maps. Uh, every car that we touch, as aforementioned in the other episodes, is, um, is goes through my hands. So. Uh, every individual aspect is regarded in that file. So we do have, like, I, I do have files where I say, okay, this is a set of, of uh, settings that I know works very well. So this is my predefined stage one. Mm -hmm. This is my predefined stage two. But then again, many customers have different modifications. So some has an exhaust, some, um, some have a different air filter, and so on and so forth. So um, we apply basic settings. I apply them to my, like, like what I know, what has proven is uh, well on dyno. Then uh, our respective partner, wherever that may be, goes on a test spin, logs the car, gives me a feedback. The customer is not allowed to touch it until then. And um, then we, whether applicable or not, we will, we will check. And then if applicable, we'll make some changes until we think it's great and we, until the logs show that it's clean. And then we only let the customer test it. So that is bespoke tuning. Uh, Americans like to call it pro tuning, uh, or we call it custom tuning. Uh, well, basically, it is just in making individual wishes come true. I see. So every single car is tailor, tailor made. I mean, tailor the tune made, for yeah. every car is tailor made. So, in order to find out, let's say, the, any previous pre-existing mods on the car, Josh, that falls in your area where you talk to the clients and you 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 understand what they've already done to the car. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah correct. Um, uh, a big part of my of, of our job is to make sure you know if the customer comes with uh, what kind of uh, pre modifications, 
okay. uh, be it maybe uh, a pre-tune or, or, or what kinds of hardware that's actually already on the car, right? And also one thing that I emphasize with my team, if our team, is that we have to um, have a certain level of customers expect. I mean, we have to meet uh, customers expectation, right? Yep, we yep, cannot yep. over over promise and, uh, what kind of le power levels that we can do or not. So, uh, yeah, so th th there's a part of consultation where we would actually communicate, uh, our, our f floor team would actually communicate with Michael and say, hey, hey Mike, this is what, we, what we, we are having today, what mods and what is that, that kind of expectations that the customer is going to... Got you. Yeah. All right, awesome. Um, let's go straight into the next one. Yeah. Um, this is a interesting question. Mm -hmm. uh, one of our viewers asked, who makes the best downpipes? In your opinion, who makes the best downpipes? Uh, we, <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, a, that's a tough one uh, to answer. <laughs> I think would, uh, we would answer this uh, by saying that what brands that we are associate with currently, right? Um, yeah, but you, you can't particularly, I yeah. mean, downpipe has a design it has to it has to feature i mean it has to make sure that the exhaust gas flows properly so it yeah. shouldn't have a weird design angle, uh, angle bend or, bending yeah, yeah the, the flow has to be smooth um, then the quality of of welds the way that it's made yeah. and then what it is made of mm -hmm. the uh, because the heat yeah. the, the modern engines run at a very high temperature so heat could cause a uh, lower grade material to crack so that is another factor and um, other than that, there's there's not really a lot to um, to say about downpipes per se. Um, well, of course, everybody knows a brand called Akrapovic. Akrapovic is the largest manufacturer of titanium exhaust in the world. They also are uh, OE uh, original equipment manufacturers for various uh, for BMW, yeah. for Porsche, for uh, for for many um, motorbikes as well. And um, they are top notch in quality in material but also in price right. so um, yeah they're like three or four times the price of a locally made uh, exhaust system yeah. or downpipe so basically for our purposes we choose we select uh, between local manufacturers between uh, European manufacturers and American manufacturers uh, depending on the application mm -hmm. um, and the purpose yeah and the purpose yeah. right uh, we we select between those manufacturers to to get the right the, the best result for for the for the best money right yeah so so to, to name a few uh, we work with uh, uh, some local um, exhaust manufacturers like Super Secret um, like from Everco um, from uh, Secret Flow from it's actually Secret Flow is actually our partner in JB mm -hmm. um, and for those that wants a bit more branded kind of stuff would be from Miltech or Army Tricks, yeah. Or, uh, or Akrapovich. Even. Akrapovich, yeah, yeah, for them. Or yeah, for that we did. Bachmann like, yeah. makes very good downpipes as well. True, yeah. Lest you forget that in some countries, uh, it is uh, mandatory to have a catalyst uh, installed, so to still have a filtration in your exhaust. Mm -hmm. So uh, Wagner makes those with uh, with catalysts and uh, catalyzers. High flow cats. Yeah. High flow cats, yeah. So Even Miltech does that too. To make more yeah. power at the same time keeping emission standards right so uh the, the viewers at home hope you got your answer uh whoever asked that question um just gonna go straight into the other one um someone had a question about the hq so they were asking since you guys are tuners why do you need a need a workshop and so what kind of services do you offer at the hq uh you know since tuning is what we're known for why do we need a workshop and what services do we offer who wants to answer that one i think we have to start by start by saying uh, how how we actually started way back in 216 do you remember that michael yeah <laughs> how, how would i forget <laughs> yeah so it's like um uh we partnered up and uh we start working from a sofa. a sofa, yeah, a sofa at our friend's place, EA Auto Works, Jackson Howie. <laughs> yeah. Shout out. Yeah, man. So, uh, and then we acquired it, no, sorry, we rented an office upstairs, and um, Drax is actually our technical partner. So, since that, we don't really have to have a physical workshop, 
but uh, there is some time that we require um, technical assistance. So Mr. Drax is actually there to help us for two, two, three years, a good three years. Yeah, a good three years. Yeah. And, and then how did this, this yeah. space, current space come about? Sorry, say again? How did this current, current HQ, this current new HQ, how did this come about? Your very own workshop. It is a sheer necessity because as Joshua said, we have to have uh, technical, Expertise, we have to apply yeah. uh, technical uh, work, me uh, mechanical work as well. It's not only opening an ECU or taking out the ECU and test driving a car, it is also changing parts, troubleshooting in many cases because some cars have uh, come with a pre-existing condition with uh, say a, a fracture TV is a yeah. very common problem. A, a, a boost leak. Boost leaks, yeah. oil leaks, oil leaks. Yeah. So, and then at the same time, our customers gain a lot of trust in us, fortunately. So they, the first address they go to whenever there's something that they want to do to their car is us. So at the same time, we now can offer them to, to service their cars and to, to, take, to look after their cars in, in a professional way. I think we've, we've created a, or prepared a video for, oh, okay, okay. Let's, let's talk a bit more about the services in depth before we prepare the video for the guys. Okay. Yeah, um, basically, um, this HQ has been uh, a, a long-held dream for us. So um, to be able to keep our customers coming back to us, hang out with them, um, be be on a friendly, on an a actual amicable base with them, yeah. we, we, to really become friends with them, and uh, have a, a group of friends and uh, fans coming back to us. So um, that's a, a very important aspect. And. We, we keep this, we, we make this our R&D center. So R&D, research and development is a very, very, very important aspect when it comes to tuning because it ensures a high level of quality. You have to be able to run, to keep a car, to keep on running, to keep on testing uh, until it's perfect and not let the customer go with a half finished job yeah, or with a, with a not really thought through file. And yeah, sometimes it's not just like a, a flash and go yeah. thing, right? It, it, the, that's why, like, uh, to the first qu first question, not on the shelf map. So, everything is uh, having Michael's uh, customization, right? So our team has to um, flash to do logins and sometimes carry bring the car to dyno to find out what's the output. So it takes quite some effort to yes. to get do it you, run from. Do you think that um, if a customer who's tuned with you um, goes to an other workshop? Uh -huh. Will they be able to get the same precision and accuracy given that you guys have programmed the tune, the ECU? Does that make any difference? You mean, well, basically, a car remains a car. We're not reinventing the wheel. So basically, any of our customers can go service their cars elsewhere. Um, it is just uh, the level of expertise that our team has when it comes to troubleshooting or maintaining a car, knowing where to find whatever error. So we, okay. we do have a lot of colleagues out there uh, that, that maintain cars and that run into issues and uh, when they can't resolve them they, they resort to our guys and we help them with our expertise. So can you talk about okay so I think we have the, the, video, ready. the video ready so let's just check out the video. Welcome to our new headquarters and research and development center in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. We welcome cars from any make and model one of the key features at our HQ is the amazing lounge for you to enjoy coffee and even a meal while we work on your car. Our workshop is equipped with state-of-the-art machinery and tools to provide you with the best possible service. From changing your oil, to servicing your brakes, to tire services, balancing and alignment, there is nothing we cannot do. We are also distributors of high-end and renowned aftermarket parts from turbochargers, intercoolers, suspensions, and more. We have a solution to all your tuning needs. Our team of highly trained technicians work with the utmost precision and care to offer the most intricate services such as an engine overhaul. We use only the best materials and tools for our work and spare no effort to deliver the best possible result. And we're back. So... <laughs> 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 so basically guys there you have it that's what services these project a offers at the kuala lumpur hq um we have many different partners all over the world 
that also offer an array of services in order to find out make sure you check out the social media pages of each respective division worldwide um, now I think we're gonna go straight into the last question for today uh, which is like a follow-up from the previous question yeah uh, so you offer all these hosts of services mm. which one would you say is your most specialized service Tuning, of course, <laughs> right? It's a no-brainer. Yeah. Right? It's a no-brainer. Tuning. Yeah. Like, duh. No. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. So, um, I think uh, a lot of people at home might not uh, fully grasp uh, or fully be aware of the work that goes into tuning a car uh -huh. or how actually you guys tune a car, you know? If they might think you push a couple of buttons and bam, the car is faster. Is yeah. that the case? That's the impression that that's we give. Yeah, that's the impression. Get, yeah. Yeah. People think it's an, it's, it either is easy or it's, it, you know, it's, it's very different. Some people think it's easy, some people think it's very hard. Um, after all, yeah, well, that's our job and that's what we do best and that's what we take our pride in. And, um, but I remember we took a video of that, didn't we? Yes, so we... we like from A to Z? Do we, we have that? Yes, we have a video which shows the car from the moment it arrives at the HQ. And, and every single uh, thing you guys do on the car yeah. until the point is ready to hand over to the customer. Yeah. So I think let's have a look at that video and you guys at home. Shout out to Jason Pang. Shout out Jason. friends at Ducket. Yeah. So thanks for his beautiful G20 20. TGOI. There you go. Let's watch a video, guys. Hey guys, so we got ourselves a G20 TGOI here today. Um, I would say that this car is actually a very great upgrade coming from the F30, the previous generation. It has much more electronics, um, convenience, and actually the handling is noticeable, noticeably better compared to the F30. So the G20 actually comes with pops and bangs uh, in sport mode. Let's see. This is stock, okay? This is stock. So in comfort mode, not, yeah. So that's uh, one of the major differences in terms of uh, acoustics um, on a stock car. So let's check out what's under the hood. Full carbon intake and also a full exhaust system. Yeah, with a decat downpipe. 330 horsepower. 330 horsepower, 470 newton meters. Very good for that. Yeah. 330 after you're done. Yep. 330 after you're done. Are you gonna do anything to the pops and bags? I think the customer wants to retain stock pops, so I think it's it sounds pretty good already in stock. So we just leave it like that. This is one clean G20, man. Yeah. Super nice. I like it. We are tuning this car using bench mode. Uh, the reason is because it's quicker than using OBD and also preventing from any coding from being uh, lost in the process. And also to be able to retain the entire backup of the ECU. And now we extract the original software from the ECU. Once the reading process is done, um, our computer will actually synchronize the file to our server in which Michael 
uh, will receive the file and then do the necessary adjustment in order to increase the, uh, the performance of this car. Okay, now we've got the file. My tire now, I go up, fix the file, and then Joshua's gonna flash it back in and do the test drive. See ya. See ya. So now that Joshua successfully extracted the, um, the base file of the car via bench mode, he uploads it to our internal server. I pick that file and, and uh, start editing it in my program. So my job is basically um, redeveloping or redesigning the software. I modify it according to settings that I've already developed on Dyno. This is a car that we have experience with and um, according to the customer's requests. So basically, um, this is a stage two file. Um, we program a DCAT. We make sure that boost is a little bit higher than on the stage one because now we made sure that it has a better intake and it has a better exhaust. So we um, provide for better flow and um, we are able to run a little more aggressive settings than on a standard stage one. So this is me working, tweaking the Lambda maps now for the stage two. Lambda is pretty much um, the air-fuel ratio, so basically we specify what air-fuel mixture we want in this car and uh, of course we try to select it in a way where it runs in the, at an optimum in terms of power and consumption and cooling. So um, this is just a part of the map, we have a lot of fragments to still go, I'm pretty much 50% done only, but once I'm done I'm going to upload this tuning file onto our server, give Joshua the green light and he will flash that file into the car and then the next step will be testing it, verifying the settings, doing a log, making sure that everything runs as, as actually uh, re required and requested. And um, yeah, upon that, we will say good to go back to the customer or maybe we'll still have room to make it a little better. The guy has an exhaust, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah? Okay. Aqua Beach. Uh, I'll add a little bit of a burble to it in this file here. So if it goes on sport mode, it will give a little bit of a popping, smooth verbal sound, nothing too extravagant. So I think you will appreciate that with that exhaust. And that's it, that concludes it. File is done. And I'll pack it up, send it to Joshua. Joshua, file is ready. You can flash the car. My job's done. All right. All right, so Michael just sent me the file and it's ready to be flashed. Oh, let's see, BMW 201, bench protocol. You can see that the process is pretty quick in comparison to OBD. Um, OBD will take around 8 to 12 minutes, whereby benching, it only takes 18 seconds to write the entire file into the ECU. All right, and we're done. Tuning this car, we'll do a lot. Um, important parameters to, to take note of is um, the boost pressure, of course, um, and also the lambda, which is the air fuel ratio, air fuel mixture, ignition timing, and uh, other various uh, parameters. Hmm. One thing good about B Flash is that it's not only just a tool for us to read and write the ECU, but also its ability to you know do do. Um, various tests, diagnostic, and also logging. So here I have a various selection of, uh, of parameters to, to look at. So, boost pressure, charger, initial angle sensor, lambda set point. Okay, it looks good. And I'll start the logging process and we'll take the car for a spin. <laughs> So during this test drive process, we try to emulate daily driving uh, scenarios like normal drive, slow drive, uh, you know, and then an OK 
occasionally some full throttle. So now let's let the engine warm up first. So now we're gonna do a short sprint to check uh, if everything runs fine. And the sh usually the, sh the short sprint will actually give us a, a gauge, a feel of the increase of performance. see that the lambda set point which is the F-ray ratio is set at 0 0.83 the blue line indicates that the F-ray ratio is um, it's following as per specified 0 0.83 rate so yeah you can see the spike here is because of the gear change and let's take a look at uh, boost pressure yeah, we are asking for 1.5 bar of boost, 1.5 to 1.6 bar of boost. It peaks out at 1.6 and it slowly tapers down to 1.3, which is good. According to the logs, I think yeah, we're pretty pretty done with the car. Perfect, okay. We're gonna upload it on our Instagram and our Facebook. Um, it, it's a pretty sh pretty interesting video. It really goes into detail about all the different things involved in tuning a car from the moment it arrives on at, to the workshop, and basically how the guys read out the file um, and then that's extract that's the file, yeah. and then how Michael will will optimize that, yeah. the file and uh, basically have it reinstalled on the file. Did I say it right? No, well, well, flash, onto the the yeah. flash onto the car, yeah. you know, slowly, slowly, you know, a car noob uh, is slowly, slowly learning some stuff from you guys. So, um, so yeah, um, we'll have that on our social media later this evening so you can go check it out. Um, I think we should post the video yeah, like right now. <laughs> Yeah, we'll uh. post it like right after this, so you can like, you guys can go and check it out. But meanwhile, don't forget that we are still giving away a uh, a customized Project A tune to a lucky viewer anywhere in the world, as long as it's a Project A region. And all you have to do to stand a chance to win is share this video uh, in the comments below. Tag five friends and let us know where you're located and what car you're driving. And we will select a lucky winner tomorrow, Malaysia time, around 8 p.m. Uh, I think with that, it, let's conclude this video. And we will see you guys next week. Next week. Next week. Cheers.